was started in 2001 um, when I had a uh, hydroponic shop and we were um, making um, tents out of extrusion, plastic extrusions. You know, we started to make quite a few of them with black and white sheeting, obviously a white interior. Um, and putting the stick on zips and bits and pieces just to, you know, to help people, you know, sort their environments out. And then we started to make more and more and more of them. So I decided to uh, look at how you could actually, you know, manufacture this product. So we went to China and we developed a, a factory into helping us make what we wanted to make. Um, by 2002, I think we'd had maybe two or three attempts at making the, the, the product work. You know, you've got to think about the materials you're using because of the temperature differentials between at the time HPS lighting you know things you know plastics you know you need to make sure that plastics aren't going to give under heat uh, heat stress so you know it took a while for us to develop the, the whole the whole ethos but we went ahead we started to make the the first bud box v1 in 2000 late 2003 um, hit the market in 2004. And ever since we did the first one, it's just been a continual development, research, develop, 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 find a different way, a better way, which, you know, ended up with us designing our own white material, which mm. is very different to everybody else's. You know, it offers a flat white, um, you know, grow rooms used to be um, just painted white, you know, white emulsion, basically, uh, which gives a beautiful diffuse light. And so does our white material, whereas any other white material tent that we can identify in the marketplace at the moment is is a shiny uh, material that you know is is, is just in, in you know it's just inferior to, to ours you know ours took four years to develop mm. and that's so you know there's a lot of expense mm. and a lot of time you know to go into that mm. and the machinery that actually makes our material is over a kilometer long mm. the, the, the tolerances are such that you know even if a forklift truck drives past at the wrong time it can set up a vibration in the rollers which mm. some of them weigh 30 40 tons mm. so you to, to get that tolerance to to constantly make the, the perfect finish so the finish is, is is incredibly important and and don't forget jonathan the very first tent that you put out back then was a white tent so it's, yeah white is always so the big. very first one 20 years ago when you started yeah a white tents and obviously yeah. white tents are becoming more popular now yeah because of wood box yeah yeah i mean you know white is without a, a shadow of a doubt the best color and that's what you reflective effectively yeah. started out doing was you were when grill tents weren't around and you were making them makeshift mm. Mm. you were focusing on what was best for the plants. Absolutely, yeah. Which was power reflectivity. Yeah. And that's as much where your white that you're game paying home. for back to the plant because that's, you know, that's where it's required. That's well, where I think 18 be. years ago, and that's the first white tent to the market. And here we are now. Yeah. And everybody else catching up. Yeah. They're Incredible, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But they won't catch up. <laughs> <laughs> With any product, it's a game of constantly trying to keep ahead and making sure that you, you you're always providing the the end user with what they need, what they need. As we use bud boxes to, to to grow plants in, you'd you'd find that things weren't always necessarily in the right place, and you go, well, we ought to change that. One of the major things was was obviously the material, but but backwards from that, um, we decided that um, people were using acoustic ducting. So right at the start, we started to oversize our ductings so that you could put insulated ducting straight into the tent without having to peel what you've just paid all that extra money for um, off and then stick it through a smaller hole. So you could put the, the ducting right through. That was one of the first things that, that we started to develop. Mm -hmm. We also started it with plastic corner pieces. And although ours was incredibly strong and you can still see the, the the video online of me driving my Land Rover over one of our plastic corner pieces on my driveway to show how strong it is. Sometimes, you know, metal is better. It's just stronger, you know, and with fan and filter systems as the one that's just in front of me here, um, you know, they weigh quite a lot and they need to be in a very, very secure environment. So we moved into uh, metal corner pieces. We then put the, the, the passive vents in the base and whilst we were working on the base and, and those kind of ideas, we looked at um, drain-to-waste systems and how to 
accommodate that within within a tent without it having to you know go over a hump to get out because then it kind of ruins the whole process of a drain to waste so that's where the little uplift bar came in we also put electrical ports and irrigation ports in the back of the tent and we were the first people to do that and we always had electricity at the top water at the bottom so that you can bring in like with an auto pot system or you know similar that the systems are available you could bring the, the the nutrition in with a cooler tank outside the tent bring it in through the base and you have, all your power can come through the top they're totally separated so yeah we kind of moved into um looking at the uh the actual overall strength of the tent as i said you know things were getting heavier lights were getting bigger so we eventually moved up to the 25 mil steel poles which are a millimeter thick and we can carry 200 kilos on our tents you know strength is, a, is very important you don't need anything crashing down in the middle of the night so yeah we developed the frame and then we moved on to um things like the silicon pads which are you know they're not just there for stopping the scratching with metal on metal but they have a they stop acoustic resonance as well if you're hanging fans from the from the ceiling they can be quite noisy um, and the silicon puts a, a buffer in between that so that it stops that acoustic resonance running through the tent and obviously through the whole of your house and don't forget jonathan you were the first to look at double cuffed vents yeah yeah we double cuffed the vents um, which so has not been done before no yeah, and yeah. then you were the first to put in the night vision window. Well, the night vision window came as our um, V3, really, wasn't it? Mm. Um, mm. Yeah, what, eight years ago? Mm. Eight, mm. Yeah, eight years mm. ago. It was. And we thought people like to check on the plants. You know, you're not growing plants just for the hell of it. People love their horticulture. They want to see what they're growing. To be able to look into that tent in the evening without disturbing the plants, I thought was a really important thing to do. So we, did, we worked with a couple of companies in the States as to what kind of filter we could use to get a commercially viable filter that could be rolled up and, and folded away and then used again and again. So we came up with one with the right spectrum of green. And um, so you can now shine a torch through in the evening um, and still have a look and check on your plants and see what's going on in there. So. Yeah, we found that whatever we do, everybody copies, you know, which is a, you know, it's a, it's a great thing to watch. Um, it, uh, you know, it's nice to be copied. Yeah, well, we try to incorporate standard, uh, you know, features like that as a standard. And we always have, even right down to the clips on the mm. side of the tent, so that mm. when you do open, you see ours are unique in that they open all out. So you can unzip the front, you can unzip the sides, and you can pull the whole thing back so you can get a proper, you know, good look at your crop and where the tent size is, you know, a little bit too big for that. But you can still do it, but we have extra doors. We were the first people to actually put extra doors into the doors so that you don't have to unzip the whole thing. Access you can just doors. Uh, put an access door yeah. in. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we you know, we, we, we did that too. We've had two different companies that have independently tested our our, our white reflectivity for us. One of them, you know, obviously we paid, you know, to have the test done, but it was a double blind test. So nobody knew which material was which apart from me. We had our white material tested by a company called Photometric and Optical Testing based in Cheltenham. Uh, all of the information is available online on our website and many others. We tested two different white materials. We tested three different mylar materials and bud box with white material won by a huge, huge margin over the white and a massive margin over the silver. This was compounded by a company in the States called Black Dog LED, um, who are great people. And they independently tested bud box as well against their uh, previous silver tents that they were using. And they found that the bud box gave 106% more power reflectivity than any other material in any other grow box that they'd use. Which caused them to switch their tanks. No, they switched all of their tank kits their to kits, bud box. To yeah. bud box whites. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And they also found that overall against standard mylar, which they believed was uh, 60 to 70% reflective overall, mm. our tent came out as 92% reflective mm -hmm. overall. These so, are important things because people 
like to throw numbers around, um, but you know we always based ourselves on on the reality, not you know not the want. That's why all of our testing has been done independently. I mean, we didn't even ask Black Dog to do it. They just said, "Look, would you mind if we set this up?" And I said, "No, go for it. Let's have a look at what the, the result is." And they were over the moon. I mean, they were stunned uh, that that they hadn't been using it before. And uh, as Cy rightfully says, you know they're. All of their tank kits with their LED lighting now go out with a with a with a, with a Bob Box Pro White.